Alright, so let's get started by setting up a local installation of Foglet on your desktop. Something inside VMware or VirtualBox, whatever you happen to have installed. To start off, what I've already had went ahead and done is I took WinSCP, connected into my Foglight server, and transferred over the installation bits. As you can see, I already have them right here. You might be getting a newer version, you might be on 5.7 or 6 or something like that, but the installation procedure will be comparable. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and unzip it. This should only take a few seconds, so I'm going to pause it and come right back. The unzipping is complete. You'll notice it can unpack the actual installation, the actual bits, as well as a properties file. We'll be using both these pretty soon. There are release notes and a few other things in here, but you're better off getting those from the eDocs website. Let's go ahead and change into that folder. And let's view the install file here. Inside here, we have a bunch of um, the install options where we can go dash F installer along with the executable name in order to run the installation. We can then see, see in, bleh, installer UI equals silence. Scroll down and we can see where we can specify licensing file and path. This is what we're going to be changing right here. It's our standard to use opt for anything that's not packaged with the operating system itself. So if you have a custom version of Apache, VAS, anything like that, you're going to go ahead and Put it in the opt folder. And you can see I placed quest soft, opt slash quest software. This is the default for an ins installation of a server. You can do whatever you want in your local workstation. That's fine. That's what we're going to use. There's port numbers as well as service account information in here as well. You're welcome to come back in here and use that. Change that later. But for now, we're going to accept all the defaults. The next thing we're going to check is the Etsy host file. A quick zoom and you can see the default installation of CentOS 5.5 uses localhost, localhost, localhost and has IP version 6 data in here which isn't helpful to us. So I'm going to go ahead and just mm -hmm. jump in and delete that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come to the end of the line and I'm going to go ahead and specify the IP address of my Foglight server which I happen to know is 1.3. You're going to have to look at your own IF config in order to determine this. Foglight.contoso.local is my domain as well as just fog light. I'm going to go ahead and see name that too. Hopefully that's nice and readable to you. If this isn't required, you're going to have a lockup on any sort of the high availability discovery stages, even if you don't use high availability. This is a known glitch in fog light. You just have to be aware of it. It's a minor thing. Apparently I didn't bother to sudo, so I'm just going to go boom. Exit back out. Super user. BI etc hosts. Delete, end of line, paste. And let's just make sure those ping, fog light, and the fully qualified domain. And they're both pinging. That's great. Let's get back to where we were over here in the installation. So here's the binary installation right here. But you notice it's not highlighted correctly. This hasn't been shamotted to have the executable bit set. So we'll go ahead and add that. Shamod plus X onto here. And now you notice it changed color. It's an easy indicator that it's a single line version of that. Single line version shows that it's been changed color. This means it's executable. So let's go ahead and do that plus that. And if you remember, it was dash F. And then put the properties file. So the executable dash F silent installer. Let's go ahead and run that installation now. This is going to take about 10 minutes to finish its installation. So I'm going to pause and come right back to that. Alright, looks like the installation stopped here. So let's take a look. Scroll up just a tad and you can see where I hit the installation, unpacks the JRE. Ultimately, Foglight is just a Java web server with some apps pushed out to it. Installation was a little static bar that goes across. It's not too impressive. Let's make sure it appeared in the right folder. As we can see, there it is. We have a binary which houses the actual bits. Cartridges, which are basically nothing more than extensions to Foglight. Configuration data. A in locally installed Foglight Agent Manager, which is what run the various agents and collect the data. 
Um, we can install those locally or remotely or pretty much anywhere we are. Very, uh, very versatile, but in a transitional state right now. And log files, that's where we're going to go right now. Inside here, we can see there are no log files. So that's good, no errors, no problems. That's a good sign. If we had to uninstall, there's an uninstaller folder. And there's a lot more going on in here that we'll look at as the course goes on. So let's go back, back into the binary folder. And we're going to take a quick look through here. So we can actually mess with JBoss itself, startup, shutdown, FMS, the executable. Anyhow, we're just going to shoot back over here. And the commands you really need to know are going to be FMS startup and FMS shutdown. These are the ones you're going to use quite often. Um, not uncommon to have to restart fog life or problems, that sort of thing. So we'll go ahead and get this guy started. Now it's going to take about 15 minutes or so for this to actually truly come up. So I'm going to change out of this folder and back into the logs folder and we can see the log files there so we're going to tail and follow it warning following standard input indefinitely oops sorry I didn't give it a log file there we go so it's slowly going to start configuring my SQL for us and look for licensing and kind of lay out the file system and create all those various schemas inside the database it's just going to take a while so I'm going to stop the video again all right, we're back. As we can see, Forge Server Startup completed. Pop open a fog light, type in your HTTPS host name with 8443 is the port number. That'll be your secured connection. Clearly you don't want to log in with the insecure version. There is an insecure version, which I'll pop in another tab and show you as a what not to do. You don't want to go to foglight.contosa8080 insecure. Why? Because you'd be sending your credentials in plain text. Your initial login is going to be foglight, foglight. Give it a few seconds to authenticate your first time. And we're in. We're going to go ahead and install a license real quick. It's an easy task to do. We could have done it from the command line, but it's good to know from the GUI here. We'll click install license, drag down to install, browse, and pick our license. I'll hit install. A few seconds later, you can see all of these things are enabled. If your license doesn't fully accept anything, it will limit the cartridges you can install as well as the extensibility. Um, you can request a temporary license or a trial license from your vendor rep. You're welcome to poke around in here. You're going to notice initially that Foglight's a little bit difficult to navigate because it, has, it doesn't necessarily have the most intuitive way of, of navigating around at all. For one thing, you start from the left side down to select your material, then you select from the right side down to select your your content and metrics. So you're working from top left to top bottom, top right to top bottom, then your data is down in the center, which is sometimes organized left to right or from top to bottom. So you can see the workflow tends to look a little something like this. Not an intuitive design. Um, Quest Dell, a company that owns Foglight, has promised to actually resolve this sort of workflow problem. They're going to try and make it into more of a modern metro style interface. But we'll see when that comes out. For the time being, this is pretty functional though. Administration over here on the right, or I'm sorry, the left, is where you're going to do most of your work. Creating users, tooling, generating support data, looking at your data metrics, storing how long you want your data, getting them retained. You can even set credentials in here. This is important for when you yourself don't have access to something. You need, say, a database administrator to put the sysadmin password in for you to use, but not necessarily know, that sort of thing. I'm going to go ahead and close it out here because at this point you should have your Foglight server up and running. Poke around, play around, look for those trouble areas I warned you about just in terms of like the host file, making sure you do the proper options when you do the installation, and you're grabbing the right bits and versions. I'll be following back up with some additional videos probably in the next few days, so stay posted.